when I was 18 or 19, I bought my first OTF, if you can call it that. I was young and dumb, and I was working at a literal fucking hot dog and lemonade stand at an outdoor mall, because, you know, we all gotta start somewhere. The outdoor mall was located across the street from what I can only describe to you as the flea market holy land. Acre upon acre of indoor and outdoor stalls, each one more exciting or confusing than the last. And each packed floor to ceiling in boxes of cheap Chinese goods, shipped in for little to no money, and then sold at a premium. And one day after work, and after getting a big wad of cash in hand from a long and miserable hot dog grease filled day, I was strolling the endless corridors of the neighboring flea market when I stumbled upon this. The Smith & Wesson... The, whatever it is. I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. I thought I was doing some kind of shady underground cash-only deal for a piece of cutlery I had assumed was not anywhere close to being a legal-to-carry knife. Obviously, I was an idiot, and $30 didn't get you much of a knife from a flea market stall knife dealer 10 years ago. I still have it. A personal reminder as to how far I've come from my cheap and chintzy Chinese knife-filled youth. It was, and still is, a piece of trash. Never held an edge, mystery blade steel, etc, etc. But it worked, and somehow, ten years later, it still fires relatively well. Little did I know at the time, but there was a knife world out there so big it would have made my horny teenage head spin. A knife world filled with wondrous things. Things like this. The Microtech Ultratech, the big daddy to the UTX-70 and the UTX-85, outshadowed only by the even bigger daddy, the Troodon. I picked this murdered out black on black single edge Tonto variant in 390 up a few months back second hand at a smoke and deal of a price, and it's seen a fair amount of use and abuse since. And it's no worse for wear. Had I seen this knife in the flea market stall all those years ago, my life would have probably gone very differently. For one, it probably would have been a clone, but I mean, just look at this thing and tell me it isn't screaming to your mall ninja obsessed teenage self. I would have been drooling on the glass display case, begging for the lady behind the counter to set me up on a layaway plan. As I've grown older as a human, and my taste in knives has matured and aged, and developed I guess, this kind of aesthetic doesn't really do it for me anymore. And it does less and less for me with each passing year, it seems. But that little teenage hot dog boy in the back of my head screams with joy every time I pull this out of the knife case. The handles are machine aluminum and are literally available in every color, both known and unknown to mankind. It's mind-numbing how many versions Microtech has for each of their knives, and they have just as many blade shapes, sizes, and finishes to choose from. This one is the murdered out all black everything with the M390 Tonto single edge blade, and it's just the right amount of unnecessary tactical ridiculousness to keep my inner teenager happy. For the non-knife obsessed, this is a dual action out the front automatic knife, which means it automatically opens and automatically closes with the throw of the switch. Hence the profile is sleek and slender and only needs to be a hair bigger than the blade sheathed within. And if you know me, you know I like sleek and slender. There's jimping absolutely everywhere on this thing. It's drowning in jimping. But looks aside, all of it serves a purpose, and all of it works to add a little extra grippiness. And to be honest, without it, the basic contouring of the handles most likely wouldn't be enough to keep it in the hands anywhere close to securely. You've got the typical logos and emblems strewn about, and all in all, aesthetically, it's kind of just a sharp, pointy rectangle. But I didn't buy this thing to look at it and admire its beauty. I bought it for the action. Microtech for a long time now has been the bar that the rest of the OTF world looked up to, and it kind of still is, considered by most consumers to be THE switchblade company. And sure, there are thousands and thousands of dollars worth of customs, and there are 40 to $50 Chinese toys like I had in my youth, but as far as real, hard-use, tactical OTF knives, Microtech has always been the place to go. And it's the action and build quality that has led the way. Push that heavily jimped switch forward and blam, like a rocket, that 3.46 inch blade flies out and locks in place. Then pull the switch back and whack, sucked right back into the handle for safekeeping. Like the Slenderman OTF I reviewed previously, this action has been endlessly and unquestionably reliable, satisfying since the day the knife arrived. And I am a card carrying ADHD mental case, so you can be sure I've been opening and closing this knife far more often than most would. It does take quite a lot of force to get that switch forward and back, and it's not exactly what I would call a smooth operator, but for safety's sake, it plays its part well. And like everything else about this knife, it just gets the job done. And it is a very noisy actuation, so I wouldn't recommend fidgeting with it at family dinners, wedding ceremonies, or funeral parlors. Just a, you know, that's a free pro tip for you. 
The blade on my knife is M390 with the single Tonto edge, as I said before, but the blade steels change like my fiancé changes shoes. Sometimes they're LMAX or CTS-204P, and you can get the single edge both in Tonto or Drop Point, both standard edge or serrated, or you can get it as a true dagger grind, sharp on both sides, again both standard or serrated. The choices are truly endless, and I found this Tonto to be a pretty damn good slicer. Definitely not the sliciest blade in my box, but 100% sharp enough to shave, and 100% sharp enough for daily EDC use. And just look at how gnarly that blade looks. Like how much material is left on the shop floor before this thing gets put together and shipped out. Grooves, milled paths, holes, we, we've got it all. Uber tactical tip to the handle. The ergos are fine. It, it is, after all, pretty much just a rectangle with some jimping on it, but it's a full-size handle, and I haven't had any issues with discomfort while destroying cardboard boxes on trash night. Nothing over the moon to report on the ergos, but it's comfortable and even in gloves, easy to hold on to and comfortable to use. Now let's get down to brass tacks. This knife cost, nearest makes no difference, $275 to $300. And the price can go higher if you want to get wild with your blade and color options. And I held off on buying one of these for the longest time because I just I couldn't justify the price tag. I mean, yeah, I'd be badass to have one, I thought to myself, but it wouldn't bring anything new to my collection that I couldn't get from a number of my knives that I already owned. So where does that leave us? Uh, well, if you're not a drop-shut fidget whore like me, and you just want to carry the most uber-mega ultra-tactical badass switchblade knife around, and you are able to find one second-hand or on sale, friggin' go for it. Like, there are videos on YouTube of people using a, an actual hammer to drive one of these through a 2x4, then they hammer it back out the other way, and it works perfectly fine. Like, that's the level of build quality you get for your $300. And it's made in America and backed by a lifetime warranty, so for sure, dude. Like, if you only had this knife and you weren't insane like me, you wouldn't need another knife. Easy one-hand operation, it looks badass, and it cuts stuff wonderfully well. But for me, because I can't discreetly fidget with it under the dinner table without scaring the soup out of my sister-in-law's hands, I don't carry it nearly as much as I would want to. So I'm kind of left in the same mindset and the same place as I am with the ZT0562CF. I love the knife, and I think it's an incredible piece of engineering and craftsmanship, but I feel like I'm just not gung-ho badass tactical Rambo-y enough for it. So, until next time, thank you for watching. Bye-bye now.